This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Growing up, I was always a really big fan of Rowan Atkins, and particularly his way with words. Well, there was his brilliant one-liners in Black Adder. Ill-conceived love, I should warn you, is like a Christmas cracker. One massively disappointing bang and the novelty soon wears off. <laughs> his theatrical one-man shows. What is it that Johnny has got that makes him stand apart from other actors of his generation? <laughs> Syphilis. <laughs> His animated appearances. He's as mad as a hippo with a hernia. Even when he advocates for free speech. We need to build our immunity <coughs> to taking offense so that we can deal with the issues that perfectly justified criticism can raise. Ron Atkinson was always to be admired for his dry wit and hilarious dialogue. So it only figures his most popular character barely talk at all. And when I say popular, I mean it's not even close. Black Adder or his stand-up may get impressively over a million hits on YouTube, but Mr. Bean literally has hundreds of millions. And it's honestly easy to see why. It doesn't matter your age, background, or even what language you speak, anyone can watch Mr. Bean and find something funny. He's the five-year-old in a man's body who goes back and forth between being sweetly innocent and relentlessly cruel, relying little on dialogue and more on his physical humor. So it was no surprise in 1997 when a film was produced around the character simply named Bean. A film many diehard fans of the iconic character describe as... Existing. Directed by Mel Smith, the albino from Princess Bride. <laughs> Would you like another helping of random? Bean understandably got mixed reactions from audiences and critics. I think everyone wanted to be on board for this movie, but the reuse of already seen material, slow pacing, and very disjointed narrative had a lot of people leaving pretty underwhelmed. I don't know many people who hate it, but many can agree just watching a Mr. Bean episode is probably more worth your time. So why do so many people think it works there but not here? Well, we're gonna examine it to find out. Let's take a look at, I'll just let him say, B. <laughs> Or as you might be saying after seeing the movie, BAM! <laughs> we open with something rarely seen in Mr. Bean, him mugging. As it should be pointed out, one of the alternate titles to this was Bean, the Ultimate Disaster Movie. Commenting on the influx of disaster films that were out at the time. Bean, the Ultimate Disaster Movie. And as awkward as this movie can get, I'd much rather sit through all of it than one argument from Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt. I may have walked yes. out, but at least I showed up in the first oh, slice. Well, you never thing. have a slice. She obviously has no idea what she's Stay getting. Oh Christ, just give me somebody's head in a turkey cooch already. Mr. Bean works as a security guard at an art museum where he, well, mugs some more. Wonder if someone's gonna confuse him for a work of modern art. Nope, didn't even try for that joke. Well, let's face it, nothing's gonna be confused for modern art in this movie. I suppose we could just fire him. Oh, the firm is about to fire Bean, leading to the most British response of somebody getting fired. No. But the head chairman has nostalgia for Bean. <laughs> Imagine living your life around that. And enjoys his, well, mugging. <laughs> it's literally half a man of that. You know, these two arguing is sounding pretty good, the more I think about it. When they find they can't fire him, they send Bean to America as a scholar to present the classic masterpiece, Whistler's Mother. Oh, and the handling of the chocolate division to Lucy Ricardo. Yeah, what do they think is going to happen? They're recommending a guy called Bean to represent them. Bean? Peter McNichol plays David, the art gallery curator who says Bean should give a speech about the painting over a celebrity. Which is funny, as the person told they should overlook the celebrity is an overlooked future celebrity. Mommy, I don't feel well. On the plane to America, Bean sees a little boy getting airsick and tries to make him laugh, surprising a sleeping passenger by popping a bag. When it doesn't work, the kid pukes, and Bean uses the bag unaware it's... Um, full. Now, if this looks familiar to you, it's because Bean already did it. There was a Mr. Bean episode where he does literally the same thing with only a few minor changes. In fact, several scenes are beat for beat the exact same ones that aired on TV. Why the hell would they repeat something we've already seen? It's a little complicated. 
I did a video a while back talking about all the Looney Tunes movies and how they used to compile different collections of their cartoons into films because VHS wasn't really a thing yet. In fact, there's a Monty Python movie almost nobody talks about that's just a reshooting of their old sketches. But big shock, this didn't really make sense to do anymore in 1997. For one, we had VCRs now and could watch these routines whenever we wanted. Two, the scenes just aren't as funny without the audience laughing and experiencing it for the first time. Maybe a live performance of this might work better because it's like hearing a song you love in concert. But recorded, there's nothing really exciting about it. Three, the delivery's all wrong. Okay, they add this guy sleeping, which does make it funnier wherein the original is just him and the kid, but look how this is edited. <laughs> That is ingeniously done. It's left up to your imagination what happened next. You're just left with that face of childlike excitement and you imagine how it's instantly destroyed. Here, they just show it. That is nowhere near as funny. You see the guy walk away and being hiding like they never put together who did it? None of that is nearly as good as this simple edit. It's like more expensive yet somehow sloppier seconds. Any second now. I think we're looking for a Brad Pitt look-alike. He doesn't look like Brad Pitt. Movie, you're silly. David invites Bean to stay with arguably the worst part of the movie, his family. We have an expression in this country. It says, over my dead body. I'd like to put it on the table right here and now. I hate these characters. I actually have no problem teaming being up with somebody in this movie and Peter McNichol plays the straight man brilliantly to his antics, but the family's just here to set up bad routines and or bad drama. He has an original quality. He goes time, today. Because of this, they're not developed that great, they're naggy as hell, and their humor's pretty lame. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity, and it could be seriously great for the kids. You're kidding. We'll be right back to Disney's One Saturday Morning. I can play that, that's the kid from Recess. Ironically, they're not even in the film that long, as shown in one of the few good edits the movie has where his wife, played by the criminally underutilized Pamela Reed, really none of the actors in the family are bad, says either the family or Bean has to go. <laughs> All right, that's pretty good. But no joke, they're literally not in any more of the film until the very end where they suddenly come in and hijack the movie to take everyone to another climax. If this was a Jurassic World movie, they'd be the clone that took the camera away from the dinosaurs for no reason. Hell, even that funny edit I showed you earlier is handled a little strangely right afterwards. After they leave, they literally stand there in silence for 20 seconds. <laughs> What, are the trees gonna start walking soon? Why are we holding on this? David takes Bean wherever he wants to go, so they drop by an amusement park. When the ride isn't scary enough, though, he messes with the controls, resulting in this decent laugh. <laughs> Again, that's pretty good. But wouldn't you know it, the boss is coming to dinner, and David totally forgot! I forget! Quick, I got that old turkey routine from the Christmas episode! Anything else we can recycle? Bean's speech gonna be okay. You don't wanna die of boredom the second he opens his mouth. Don't ruin this man. He gave up his job as judge to give you this art gallery post. <laughs> no joke, when I saw this in the movie theater, I literally heard a kid say, Can I go to the bathroom? I already saw this on TV. Yeah, kid, but that had a laughing audience that filled in the gaps of no sound. <laughs> This is so quiet, I swear even silence is holding its breath. The Big Bang could be born out of this silence! When they try putting the turkey in the microwave and it blows up, it's cute. But you can tell this was filmed expecting a huge amount of laughter. Watch. <laughs> in front of a live audience, but when there's no laughter like the screening I was at, you get... Mimes playing charades aren't this quiet! David puts together he's not an expert, and again, I do like seeing these two together. 
It's kind of a shame they never worked him into anything else Mr. Bean related because it is great seeing McNichols' reactions. Was Leonardo da Vinci an American basketball player? If you look at this like an A24 horror film where a man is slowly losing his mind to a psychotic sociopath, it's ironically a lot funnier. It already has the uncomfortable art house sex scene you're regretting taking your parents to see this movie with. <laughs> it also serves as its own porn parody. Hey, you know who I like? This guy! This, this, this guy! Him! Him! I like this guy! Uh... Malcolm. Malcolm, I love this dude, man. You know what? Stamps loves him too. When every person, moment, and penny counts in your business, you can't afford to take any of them for granted. Isn't that right? Mal Malcolm. Stamps.com gets it because for the last 25 years they've been helping businesses like yours save time and money. You can focus on your business knowing Stamps.com has all your postage needs covered with premium discounts and great rates. And you know who else I love? You know who else I love? This person! That's right, this, uh... Are you sure? The post office in your post office, that's a segue. With stamps.com, all you need is a computer and printer. They even send you a free scale, so you'll have everything you need to get started. If you need a package pickup, you can easily schedule it through your stamps.com dashboard. Tamara, read this next part. If you need? Uh, yeah, and if you sell products online. And if you sell products online, stamps.com seamlessly connects with every major marketplace and shopping cart. She did it! She did She read that! Can Malcolm do that? Running a business isn't cheap, especially when it comes to fulfilling orders for your customers. Luckily, Stamps.com has huge carrier discounts, up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates. Plus, Stamps.com automatically tells you your cheapest and fastest shipping options. It, it just doesn't sound right when I do it. Did you want to try the Can next I do one? It? Yeah, I, mean, I really think you'd be uh, really good at it. For 25 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses. Get access to the USPS and UPS services you need right from your computer anytime, day or night. No lines, no traffic, no waiting. That was good, man. That was really good. You want to know who else? I love this guy. No! This guy! I love this guy! Oh my god, I thought you were a little taller originally. There we go! This guy! Yeah! Jim. Jim! Set your business up for success when you get started with Stamps.com today. Sign up at Stamps.com slash Nostalgia for the special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com slash Nostalgia. That's great, guys. Oh my god, I love you guys. I love you guys. What are your names again? Tamara. Oh, I hate you. Jim, thank god! This is a party. That should be good. <laughs> Doug plays God of War for the first time every Friday on Twitch. We also have content five days a week. Hope to see you there. Whistler's mother arrives at the gallery and guess who David brings with him to see it. Right after he picks up Professor Hardy and Dr. Laurel as well. They go over security before the big reveal. There are only two. I have the other one. So if the painting turns up missing, I'll know where to come. Sweet. After one doctor inflicts damage, we'll see another doctor inflict more. Doctor, why don't you just stay here? Maybe a look at the real thing will inspire you for your speech. Okay, at this point, this is like leaving Kanye West at a bot mitzvah. Somebody should have known better. Bean gets close to the painting and accidentally sneezes on it, and as you'd imagine, all his attempts to wipe it clean make it worse. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, most of this section works. Despite it being predictable, it is creatively predictable. I'd also like to imagine that's the sound he makes in the porno parody. Hot. As much as I complain about the pacing, it really is pitch perfect here. You really do feel his dread as every time things seem to be fixed, it suddenly gets worse. You feel the same anxiety he's going through, which makes it all the more relatable, yet hilarious. The only one more relatable is McNichol, who gives one of my favorite freakouts in any movie. Oh! Oh, God! Oh! Mary, Mother of Jesus! Jesus of Nazareth! It's the one time he's allowed to go over the top and Atkinson has to downplay it, and it's great. Give me one more look at the painting. Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, God! I'll just say it. In Mr. Bean's own movie, Peter McNichol gets the biggest laugh of the flick. I gotta go to jail. 
My wife leaves me. My daughter becomes a prostitute. I wind up on death row, sharing a cell with Butch McDick! Can I just rewrite the movie where all that happens? I don't want to see all that happen, I just want to see his reaction to all that happen. Do you drink, Bane? No. Good. Neither do I. They hide the picture and get drunk because, well, they have no idea what else to do. The only art I will get anywhere near are the pictures I draw on the pavement, hoping passers-by will throw nickels in my hat. It's not fair. I was going to be a playwright. <laughs> oh, good. I really miss the chemistry he had with his family. You know, those loving moments where he gets yelled at and preyed on by vampires. David, I think I'm going to have to leave you. I don't even know why you were together. You're like Kramer versus Kramer with Kramer. Can't sleep, huh? Oh. Me neither. Can't stop thinking about naked women. Spoken like a 40-year-old writing for a 9-year-old. That's a weird line. The kid gives Bean an idea to switch out the painting with one of the promotional posters. So he sneaks in like Lassiter dressed as Powerline and gives the security guard laxatives. Because poo. <laughs> Wow, they really built up that inspiring tidy whiteys on his head music. That was a magical moment, I guess. He switches them out just in time for a cameo from General what? David Lang. I'm delighted to meet you, sir. Of course you are. This is a Johnny English movie, right? Welcome to our humble abode. Not too humble, I hope. I'm expecting much. No joke, apparently Burt Reynolds was such a big Mr. Bean fan, he demanded a role if they ever made a movie. Man, imagine if he was given McNichols' part. Put it down. seem to fall for it, but they forget Bean has to make a speech. I like this because he does talk so little, so the idea of him giving a speech is like pulling teeth, and he delivers it as such, saying very little, very slowly. If it was really small, microscopic, then hardly anybody would be able to see it. Half the joke isn't even what he's saying as much as how everyone wants to believe what he's saying is so ingenious. With an election year coming up, get used to that. His mother was a hideous old bat who looked like she had a cactus lodged up her backside. <laughs> the accent's funny. <laughs> Somehow he gets through, everybody applauds, and all oh, well that ends well. It's your daughter. She's been in a motorcycle accident. Oh, right, the characters everyone hates are in turmoil. <laughs> what I love is that in the middle of this ending, getting interrupted by an out of nowhere dramatic climax, it's interrupted by yet another out of nowhere dramatic climax. Yeah, no kidding, there's a shootout on the way to the hospital. Interwoven like a rug made out of Christmas lights. Put it down, put the gun down. I need uh, a Jennifer Langley's room. She came in about 11 o'clock. Oh! Hey, hey, don't interrupt it with this comedy. An episode of ER is starting! Oh, my bad. Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> ah! oh! Oh, I'm so... so just... Again, if I could just watch a movie of Peter McNichol bumping into people, I somehow feel like it'd be funnier than most of this flick. As you probably guess, both of these are very sloppy setups for comedy from Bean. One where he dresses like a doctor and works on the cop who was shot earlier. He Seinfelds an M&M into his body, and in a scene that's so stupid, I kinda gotta laugh. He stumbles upon the bullet, and it instantly brings him back to life. She's climbing back. Stabilizing. Well, I can see you went to the best of medical schools. What time is it? Can you turn the clock back about 12 hours for me? Aw, I guess I have missed how they haven't said one nice thing to each other in the entire flick. I still want them to make it. Wake up. Wake up. Bean goes two for two as he stumbles into the room of David's daughter and he accidentally shocks himself, waking her up. Mom? Dad? What kind of hospital is this where accidentally running into people saves the day? I think three people were brought back to life during this scene alone. Tell us, what can we do? We'll do anything. Well, I suppose you could let me stay another week. He is the Elmer's glue that held your demolition side of a marriage together. He stays a little longer to do a few more routines, including a pretty great one where he's introduced to giving the bird and has no idea what it means. The look in this lady alone makes the bit worth it. And Bean finally goes home. I mean, he's just expressing what we'd all like to to those characters. He heads home to England, where it's revealed what happened to the original painting of Whistler's mother. Well, it's weirdly more appealing to look at than him as a cartoon. 
And that was Bean. Most people are right. It is better just to watch the original shorts. I will say it's not an awful movie. There are some moments that get some real laughs, like messing up the painting, the amusement park ride, waving the finger, McNichols' performance. Moments like these are really enjoyable. But man, do you have to wait through a whole bunch of awkward boredom to get to them. I usually don't mind if a movie has a forced setup or contrived plot if it leads to the goods, which in this case would be slapstick comedy. But most of the time it's either dull or slow or repeating bits we're already familiar with adding very little. I still love Mr. Bean and Rowan Atkinson and this movie in no way destroys his comedic legacy. The half hour shorts is really what's gonna last and most of us are gonna watch over and over. The movie's not a train wreck, but it should be a silent partner in a mostly silent landscape. I'm a nostalgia critic guy, remember? So you don't have to. Can't stop thinking about naked women. This month for Cameos for Charity, we're doing the Center for Victims of Torture. I've done this charity a couple times and there's a reason. I literally cannot think of anything worse. We've used the word torture as a way to emphasize things we don't like to go through, but these are people that have literally gone through the worst things you can imagine. This center heals victims of torture through personal care worldwide, strengthens partners who heal torture survivors, and advocate for the protection and care of torture survivors. Heavy stuff I know, but you can help out. If you want a cameo of me saying happy birthday or good luck or whatever, click on the link below and be giving to a good cause. If you're like, nah, you suck, consider checking out this charity anyway. They're wonderful people doing wonderful work, and you can play a big part in helping with the healing.